We've got some difficult days ahead. But it really doesn't matter with me now. Because I've been to the mountaintop. I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. This is Arise America. We want to welcome back C. Virginia Fields and Gloria Brown Marshall as we continue our look back at the life of Martin Luther King Jr. Welcome back, ladies. Thank you. So many people today, they hear about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., this amazingly loud voice, this larger-than-life presence, but you knew him as a man. Was he a, physically a big man? I would not say he was physically a big man. Now, I'm probably not the best one in terms of <laughs> height and images, but I would say maybe about 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, he was small in stature, and when you saw him without the suit jacket on, like on the baseball um, pop field, he was, uh, I would say, small in stature, small to medium, but he was not this robust, big man. Abernathy, Reverend uh, uh, David Abernathy, was much larger in stature than Dr. King, but he was very approachable. Uh, he was not, I mean, we were in awe of him just because he was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but he was approachable, and you would walk up, and he, you know, put his hand on your shoulder, on your head, and <laughs> pat you, and you felt, you know, really special. So I in terms of the opportunities that I had to have that kind of, that type of encounter. Now, when I marched in April of 63, that was the first and only march that Dr. King, uh, Reverend Abernath, and Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth led. But Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth did not go to jail, but Dr. King and Abernath, they did. Mm. And so we were in jail in Birmingham during the same time. And of course, I learned later that's when he wrote the letter mm -hmm. from the Birmingham jail. And I remember one day when we were going to dinner, and they had, you know, the hall for the women and the hall for the men and all the women. We were going to dinner and we spotted Dr. Keen on the, uh, we started screaming. They never put us out at the same time to go to dinner again. <laughs> so those are just moments that were very special in seeing him. From a, from a legal perspective, you know, King's emphasis on human rights and dignity, how are we to interpret that today? Well, I think it was important then that he understood the whole person. The, the equality meant more than equality under law. It meant equality in life, uh, the, the ability to raise a family with a decent wage and, you know, to, to walk down the street without fear. I mean, one thing I'd like to add, as a, I feel part of the next generation, so we have a generation who fought on the front lines, and as a civil rights attorney, I led a protest march in Montgomery, Alabama, when I worked for Southern Poverty Law Center. I represented black children in um, Alabama, Georgia, Georgia, North Carolina, other places like that, and, and education is one of the core um, concepts that we need to talk about. But one thing I need to let people understand that each generation gives what they can, and then you go to the next generation. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you talked about Martin Luther King as a man, because some people may think, mm -hmm. I can't contribute anything, because he was so much larger than life, then who am I? And I want people to understand, as a civil rights attorney, as an educator, as a politician, you give what you can. You give what you can from wherever your source of, of education or skill or whatever it may be. And so when you're looking at a human being, what does a human being need? And I think that's what Martin Luther King did. He looked at the whole human being, not just the legal human being or the educated human being, but as a, as a person, each of us with a talent and a goal and a need to contribute, how can we best mm. realize our potential in this country? Now King was at the forefront of the poor people's campaign. How does that resonate today and who are the leaders that we should be looking at today? 
And first of all, I'm glad that Gloria spoke about more than just that civil rights or desegregation mm. of lunch counters, but much more. And of course, the war in Vietnam and all of these. And of course, as he, uh, when he was uh, assassinated, he was looking to do the Poor People's March to focus on how we eliminate poverty. Those issues are very much the same today. When we look at the statistics, the number of persons living in this country in poverty, uh, given where we are today versus where we've been, it is alarming. And I think that uh, there are efforts underway now to bring back into the forefront uh, efforts around focusing on poverty, social uh, inequalities, health care issues, because he certainly talked about health care as a human right. And we're seeing that being under attack. So all of the issues that were uh, planned to be addressed under the Poor People's Campaign health care, uh, unemployment, underemployment, lack of education, social justice, social injustices, I should say, and racial inequalities are uh, being, you know, looked at. And I think that what we're seeing across this country, the need still exists for that focus to be. And I think we see more people involved from different, you know, groups, whether it's the students fighting against, uh, for, mm. you know, against gun violence, or whether it's Black Lives Matter, or whether it's Wall Street groups who have formed. I think you see all of them coming together under this umbrella that I hope will be a large and massive force. You know what I would like to see? What would you like to see? I would like to see America go to Washington DC fill the streets do not leave until Congress acts on something on behalf of the people in this country we just stay there mm. we don't leave from every state every union and we just stay that they can't arrest all of us they can't put dogs on us they can't put hoses on us but we are determined to bring about change in this country and not lose the um, gains that have been made. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing your stories. See Virginia Fields and Gloria Brown Marshall. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we look at the role religion played in the civil rights protest. But first, some of the staff here at Arise News share their thoughts about Martin Luther King Jr. You're watching Arise America. Sherry Richardson, and I'm a segment producer for Arise America. On this day, 50 years ago, the world lost a hero, a hero who fought for our equal rights, our civil rights, and one of my favorite rights is the right to vote. If you don't exercise that right, then you lose all claim to complain about anything. So exercise the right to vote. Hello, my name is Shannon Lanier, and I am the co-host of Arise 360. And I think Martin Luther King Jr. stand as a great example to me as an equality advocate to do the best I can every single day. My name is Madison Lanier, and Martin Luther King is just... He is a great man. Hi, my name is Aki Somalup. I'm a producer here at Arise News. And when I think of Dr. King, I'm reminded of his quote, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. This is a reminder that the road of life is long and you have to stay the course through the ups and downs of life. He made black people and white people go to the same school and black people and white people go on the same buses and, and black people and white people like drink at the same water fountain. My name is Duarte Geraldino and I'm the anchor of Arise America. I'm always so inspired by Dr. King because based on everything that I understand about him, he physically was not a big man, but he had such a big heart and sense of purpose that in life and in death, he inspired so many people to fight for justice. And there was this guy who shot him because he didn't like his plans. And so Martha Luther died. My name is Jessica White, a producer here at Arise 360. Dr. King embodied the dream of nonviolent protest. He lets you know that you can fight with your words and that your actions can make a demand on all those around you. Keep living the dream. This is Arise America.